Hi, I am uh, Dr. Shailesh Srikhande. I am the head of GI and HPB Cancer Surgery. I am also the overall head of Department of Surgery and I serve as the Deputy Director at the Tata Memorial Hospital in Mumbai. Uh, it's a privilege and pleasure to be here with you today. Sir. So pancreatic cancer surgery is widely recognized as perhaps the most difficult of GI cancer operations. It's widely regarded as one of the most difficult operations in the body for over a hundred years. Uh, so these operations are not just skill dependent, they are not just surgeon dependent, they are not just center dependent, but there are a number of factors where there is an interplay. The interplay is related to tumor environment, the interplay is related with the condition of the patient and the kind of pre-operative prehabilitation that one can do to try and optimize them. Any surgery is actually a stress for any patient. So the difficult job for a surgical team and a surgeon is that we actually first cause harm uh, to a patient in order to make them all right. So in pancreatic surgery, this is perhaps the highest because it's a risk which is uh, very high as compared to other operations. So the way to do that is not only look at age, which can be a number in isolation, but it's also important to look at their liver functions, their general fitness in terms of the quality of their heart, their performance status in terms of how their lung function is, whether they have other comorbidities which need to be optimized in terms of diabetes, hypertension, obesity, and so many other common diseases of modern civilization. Incidentally, pancreatic cancer is something uh, which is a disease of the developed world and it is something which is on the rise and that's going to happen for the next two decades across India that we are going to see more and more incidents of pancreatic cancer as well. So pre-operative habilitation, prehabilitation as we call it and optimization is the key to try and enhance outcomes uh, in the post-operative setting and also to make the intraoperative journey of the patient smoother than what would it would be otherwise. Of course, there are multiple technical factors in terms of how their coagulation profile is, how long it's going to take for the liver function to recover, what can be done for the liver function to improve. If you are looking at head pancreatic cancer, you can have pancreatic cancer in the head, in the neck, in the body and tail. But if you have lesions in the head and the neck of the pancreas, you often get what is known as obstructive jaundice and then you need to look at the coagulation parameters, optimize the liver function, maybe reduce the jaundice first and then you are in a position where you can try and say that okay, now we have minimized the risks to a large extent and now let's go on to the operative phase of the procedure and actually undertake uh, this complex operation for say pancreatic head cancer. Oh, very clearly, the principles of surgery all over the world for every single organ essentially haven't changed. Uh, we like to constantly keep on saying that we are new and we are original. But as we grow in life, we will realize that there are very few things which are truly original. So in that sense, uh, the more we change, the more we remain the same. Having said that, what has changed is the kind of finesse that we are able to introduce in the world of surgery. And perhaps the maximum amount of finesse is required in complex surgery like neurosurgery as well as in pancreatic surgery and transplantation surgery. So this organ is perhaps located in one part of the body where anatomical variations are the norm. Almost every other patient can have an anatomy of the biliary system or the portal venous system or the arterial system which is different in every individual. It's not the same. So even God has his or her own ways of keeping harmony uh, and every organ can be different, every tumor can be different. Now how has surgery got more refined? Much better instrumentation, much more clearer ability to navigate the situation, more opportunities to learn, no more are people going to be working on patients where you treat them as something experimental. In the modern era, 100 years ago it was different but in the modern era today you have the ability to understand anatomy in a very comprehensive fashion before, use surgical finesse, don't forget the old principles, use modern instrumentation, much better suture materials, much better energy devices, and then you can do great pancreatic surgery, whether you do conventional, laparoscopic, 
or robotic surgery. So yes, surgery has got more refined and got safer technically. Plus the kind of perioperative care that you get now, whether it's prehabilitation with the program known as enhanced recovery after surgery known as ERAS. ERAS is not something which is done just after surgery. It is prehabilitation, intraoperative and postoperative. There are 24 elements to a dedicated ERAS program and I would encourage anyone who wants to really get into pancreatic surgery, it's not just about surgery, it's not just about the surgeon, it's about the whole team trying to come together so that you maximize the benefits uh, to your patients when you offer this complex surgery. I think, um, you know, the father of the modern quality movement was already establishing this in 1901. So if you know about Codman and about Deming, you will know what is quality. You will also know perhaps from the Toyota example as to what is quality. These are the people who influenced uh, what do you mean by quality. So one is to use the word evidence. The other is to generate your own evidence in your own milieu, in your own environment. And how do you do that? You do that only by excellent audits and by documentation. So one is to be aware of what is the cutting edge information and evidence which is out there in the literature, but that has no relevance if I don't have an audit of my own outcomes. So the key to that is documentation. Um, documentation, the more you document, the more you audit, the more you audit, you know what processes are involved, what are the stakeholders involved in this quality cycle and then you are able to apply modern technology wherever it's required but just because we have modern technology doesn't mean it has to be employed and used in every single patient in other words when you have a hammer everything should not look like a nail we are supposed to be not technicians we are supposed to be excellent technicians by good training and hard work but we are also supposed to be excellent scientists and thinkers uh, when it comes to treating every individual patient. So even surgery contributes to the concept of what is very fashionable today to say the world of precision oncology. The biggest treatment in precision oncology is precision surgery also for localized solid tumors. So if you talk about the surgical aspects in terms of reducing morbidity and mortality, uh, one of the well-known factors is that you need to restrict the number of centers which should be kind of regulated and audited for the quality of outcomes that happen after such complex surgery. This statement might sound a little bit offensive to some people, but there is world literature and world data. We just now spoke about evidence-based medicine. You have evidence that in the UK, for example, if the center is not doing more than 60 or 80 operations a year, they are no more allowed to do pancreatic resections. Surgeons and doctors are not allowed. They are expected to refer this patient to a dedicated center because as I repeated earlier, it's not just about the surgery. It's about the surgeon, the team and the center. So one is centralization. Second is there is a learning curve which is involved for every surgeon's credentialing and auditing. And they say that you require about 60 operations, 60 Whipple resections to be able to truly negotiate the learning curve that patients get good outcomes, not just perioperative outcomes, but even long-term outcomes, which is what the goal of cancer surgery should be. It should not be that just you do great surgery, it looks good and the patient goes home. That's the primary goal. But the ultimate goal is to make you all right forever. In there, if you do good surgery, then these patients have the chance to get adjuvant and neoadjuvant treatment options, including targeted and newer approaches like vaccine therapies. So surgery remains at the center with quality in specialized hands in specialized centers. This is not a surgery which can be done universally by everyone. Everyone wants to do this surgery is an emotion, but it should be centralized to specialized surgeons is the evidence. That's why I said that what, a, what I say may sound offensive, but that's the right thing to say. And then you have the chance for the patient to be treated in a multidisciplinary fashion so that they have a good quality of life. The chance of recurrence goes down and they have a chance to live longer. So as I said, uh, thanks so much for having me here. I've been here for some of the previous Apollo 
uh, conclaves as well as many of the other conclaves across the country and beyond. Um, I think it's we should never forget that we all meet and we all exist and we all have a life only because patients need us. There is someone who is not well and there is some family under duress and so they reach us. So it's a great responsibility. It's not a fashion to speak about the Hippocratic Oath. It's a great responsibility as to what we do to our patients. But while we do that, while we document that, it's also important to learn from colleagues and exchange ideas from each other. Uh, surgery and oncology is a speciality where we will keep on learning till the last day of our lives as long as we practice. So it's an ever-changing, very dynamic speciality. More and more information keeps on coming. So these kinds of conclaves are extremely important for exchange of ideas, research ideas and to improve treatment outcomes for patients. So you have done a terrific job in organizing this meeting. <music>